So you've got the opportunity to do a ground mount solar system. So which way do you go? Static or tracking? Nelly here from Greenwood Solutions. This week, we're looking at a ground mount system. Tracking or static? So after watching the presentation, you'll understand the difference between the two and also see the energy differences when it comes to output and the financials. Let's get stuck into it now. Most of us are aware that solar tracking systems produce more energy per kilowatt of solar installed. But the question often asked is, is this a more viable option than a static system? In this presentation, we will look at the different tracking systems from a large ground mount system perspective. How much increased production wise over static systems, cost of systems, cost of maintenance and other factors. A solar tracking system maximizes production by orientating the panels to follow the sun during the day. Solar trackers are typically used for ground mount solar panels and tend not to be used in domestic situations. The angle at which the sun's rays hit the solar panel, known as the angle of incidence, determines how well the panel can convert the incoming light into electricity. The narrower the angle of incidence, the more energy a photovoltaic panel can produce, potentially. Solar trackers orientate panels so that the solar resource strikes them perpendicular to their surface. A single axis tracker moves your panels on one axis of movement. These configurations allow your panels to arc from east to west and track the sun as it rises and sets. A dual axis tracker allows your panels to move on two axes, aligned both north-south and at east-west. It can track seasonal variations in the height of the sun in addition to normal daily motion. Most tracking systems that are out there are active, which means that the tracking system is motor-driven to energize a mechanical device that tilts the attached solar panels the right way. Passive solar trackers also track the solar rays, but they move by using the heat from the sun to warm a gas which expands, causing a mechanical movement of the solar panels. When the sun moves and the gas cools, it compresses again and the panels move back. Generally, a solar panel system with a single axis tracker installed sees a performance gain of anywhere between 10 to 30%, and in the right situation, a dual axis tracker can produce up to 40% more than a static array. But at what cost? Systems that incorporate a tracking configuration tend to cost more per watt, or do they? Take up more room and land costs. More things to go wrong, Murphy's Law. When analysing the cost effectiveness of any particular system, we'll need the appropriate tools and assumptions have to be made. So we're talking ground mount systems here, of course, and some of the assumptions are as follows. System size is 1.28 megawatt. Location is Melbourne, Australia, with a lat long of 37.144. Static system panel tilt at 25.5 degrees north equator facing. Average output per kilowatt installed is 3.6. Some more assumptions. Electricity price increases 2% every year. Panels degrade at 2% in the first year and 0.25% every year after that. Pretty efficient panels. Maintenance for the static system is $1,000 in the first year, increasing 2% every year after that. Cost per watt supplied and installed for the static system is a dollar, so a 1.28 megawatt system is $1,280,000. It occupies a little under 1.4 hectares. A 1.28 megawatt system at 25.5 degrees north facing in Melbourne, Australia will produce 4,612 kilowatt hours a day. Price for electricity is $1.25 per kilowatt hour and export is at 7 cents per kilowatt hour. 50% of solar produced services the load and 50% goes to the grid. Savings in the first year is $268,341. Savings after 10 years is $2,803,000. Savings after 25 years, we're looking at nearly $8 million. So as you can see, we've got the import-export price, the output per day in kilowatt hours, savings first year, 
10 year savings and the 25 year savings. And that's at a 50 50 import export split. And the years of investment, initial investment, return on investment, annualized ROI, payback period in years, discounted payback period, MPV and IRR. For more on commercial solar financials, see our other videos. So a lot of the assumptions are the same as the static system, but some aren't. Still in Melbourne, electricity price still increases 2% every year. Panels degrade at 2% in the first year and 0.25% every year after that. Nothing's changed there. Now let's assume that the increase over a static system is 25% in production. And panel tilt is a max of 50 degrees both east and west. Average output per kilowatt installed is now 3.6 plus 3.6 times 0.25, which is 25%. So this takes it out to 4.5 kilowatt hours per kilowatt installed. Maintenance for the tracking system is $1,250 in the first year, increasing 2% every year after that. Cost per watt supplied and installed for the tracking system is $1.20. So a 1.28 megawatt system is $1,536,000. Occupies 20% more than the static array, so looking at least 1.68 hectares. A 1.28 megawatt system with east-west tracking produces 5,783 kilowatt hours a day. Price for electricity is 25 cents again, and export is 7 cents, and disappearing quickly. 50% of solar produced service to the load, and 50% goes to the grid. Savings in the first year is $336,000. After 10 years, three and a half million. And after 25 years, nearly $10 million. And you can see in this table, the output per day savings, first year, 10 year savings and 25 year savings. And also in the second table, you can see the return on investment, annualized ROI, payback periods, etc. Years of investment is 10 years for all. The initial investment is more for the tracker um, and there's, there's a difference in favour of the static system, $256,000. The ROI obviously favours the tracker system and so does the annualised ROI. Payback period in years is the same. Now the discounted payback period is one year less for the tracker system. Now the net present value difference is in favour of the tracker system to the tune of $161,000 and the IRR of course favours the tracker system. So the tracker system is a more economically feasible based on the assumptions made. We have assumed a price to install of $1.20 a watt and one question to ask is at what price does the static system become more attractive? I've used goal seek part of the what if analysis in Excel and the answer to that question is a little over $1.25 a watt. That's what the tracking system will have to be um, to become less attractive than the static system at the 10 year point. Also, that question can be asked in reverse. How much does the dollar per watt price have to drop before the static system becomes more viable than the tracker system? The answer is at 95 cents a watt. So it has to drop five cents a watt. And both calculations were based on the internal rate of return for the 10 year investment point. I've assumed a percentage increase over the static system of 25%. But what if we use, for example, another lower percentage? Let's assume 20% increase. How does this affect our overall single tracker performance? And you can see that ROI and annualized ROI and all those other financial figures have, have dropped down. Let's assume a 10% increase. How does this affect our overall single tracker performance? So ROI has gone down to 100.67%, annualized ROI 7.21, and the discounted payback period has gone to eight years and payback period uh, six years. For all examples given, I've assumed a 50-50 split in regards to negating draw from and export to the grid. Now with a tracking system, the output curves tend to be a lot flatter, which in a lot of cases more closely matches the consumption load profile of a lot of sites. So what happens when the split goes to 70-30 in favour of direct consumption? Well, the ROI increases to 183% and the payback period in years drops down to four years and your internal 
rate of return jumps up to 24.62%. So it's a considerable difference. Now you can see all the results here in this table. So spend the time having a bit of a look. Uh, there's a lot of data there. Now in this table, we're looking at the worst IRR, and that's for the tracker at a 10% increase above the static system in regards to production uh, at $1.20 a watt. Now the best IRR is the tracker system at 25% at $1.20 a watt with a 70-30 split. So 70% direct consumption with a 12 year saving of $12,278,000. The worst 25 year saving result is from the static system at $1 a dollar or what with 50-50 consumption export ratio. So you can see $7,787,000. The highest is obviously for the tracker system with a 25% increase at $1.20 per watt cost and a 70-30 split. It's, it's $12,278,000. Conclusion. When comparing to ascertain what is the best system, static versus tracking, many assumptions need to be made in addition to the reality of actual energy production and how it matches with site loads. The reality is that a tracking system of the same capacity compared to a static configuration will produce more energy at any point in time, but at what cost? I've given examples ranging from 95 cents a watt to $1.25 a watt. When talking of IRR in these examples, I've selected 10 years, but if another figure was selected, this would alter these results. In addition, if the cost of the land was factored into the calculations, the results would be different again. Thanks so much for watching our presentation on ground mount systems, static versus tracking. I'm Veli from Greenwood Solutions. If you have any questions, any inquiries, any answers, feel free to drop us a line. If you like these videos and you want us to continue making them, hit that subscription button. See you next time.